friends, this is Raj Sahu from Christ First Church, the founder of this online Paul Free Church. Because we don't want to deal with deception, we kicked out this bloody Paul and his 14 books from our Bible. This man is a deceiver who had come to deceive us and the purpose of this church, our church, founded a few days back, June 30th, is to have a laser focus on the words of the Messiah, Christ Jesus. What did he come to teach? Because his teaching, teaching lies buried under the, or obscured under the deceptions of this evil apostle Paul who says with own mouth, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 16, the crafty fellow that I, Paul, am, I took you in by deception. In Romans 3, 7, he says very clearly, I lied, I'm a liar. <laughs> and I lied to get people to the glory of God. So he's a liar, he's a deceiver, and he's very crafty, and he has deceived us. He says with his own mouth, guys, but this video is dedicated to something spectacular. And this I'm not saying because it's the story of Bible, condensed, summarized as the father. See, I didn't want to record nothing after the last two videos I recorded. I said, Lord, that is enough. I can do it no more. Lesser people understand the deception, more are the brutal attacks. So you say, okay, since it's a free service, <laughs> it is a free service. Everything I do is free, guys, by the way. Jesus, Jesus says, give freely for you were given freely. I believe in that. So, Father, I just said, Father, I, I don't want to teach no more. I don't want to share no more. Enough, 170, something like that. Videos are already there. Clearly defining, clearly providing, clinching evidence, a plethora, tons of evidence about the deception of Paul. How much more? If people still don't want to believe, it was a doctrine of love. Turning away from sin, turning to loving kindness. Only good Samaritans will be saved. I have taught all that, shared all that. As Father gave me, as the Son gave me, I teach you guys I am nothing. I always am the bottom of all. The bottom of the barrel kind of person. Rejected, dejected, ejected, broken, failure. These are some of the words which best define me, Raj Sahu, okay? But then when you don't want to do something, the Lord comes and pulls your ear. Go, record this. Give them a summary of what the story of Bible was. What is the message of salvation? Because it, even today, it lies untaught. What, what is taught is saved by grace through faith, not by works. Lest no man may boast. Plucked out from Ephesians 2, 8, 9, words of devil. Taught by his son, John 8, 32. Check it out. Why Jesus called these Pharisees, you sons of devil. Why did he condemn Paul and his friends? In Matthew 23, 33 with condemnation and six other woes. You check out guys. Hmm? But today is going to be a very interesting back to because Paul drives me nuts. Today's is a walk through from the Garden of Eden to the book of Revelation when the new Jerusalem comes down. The father is giving guys, if you have time, I will beg you. Go through it. Marty may, uh, has a dig at me. Raj, I have to get popcorn to watch <laughs> your long videos. But then how do I encompass all this in five minutes? Is it instant coffee, guys? No, think of it as a longer sermon in your church. It's, an, it's a one hour or could be 35 minute video. I don't know the span. As the Lord gives me, I'll give you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father, God. Give me your words, Lord. To feed your sheep. I am also one of those sheep, Lord. Yearning, thirsting, hungry for your word, Lord. Explain to us the whole message from Garden of Eden. You planted and put your two children to the book of Revelation. And the judgment day vision that Jesus gave. Who will be saved, who cannot be saved. Thank you, Father. Alright, guys. Fasten your seat belt and get re ready for a bumpy and rocky ride. <laughs>
See guys, Garden of Eden, there were two trees. We, this is going to be a synopsis because we have to keep it under 45 or one hour at least. I do not know at this point. But go through it and you will understand the dramatic difference due to the distractions of Paul. We missed the whole thing completely. The whole message was missed in total, in totality. This is coming for the Father. If it is not, then I pray, Father God, destroy me if I am a liar. And I am crafting it. All this, then I need to be killed, destroyed. I don't wish to live one second here on this God-forsaken planet, which is ready to be destroyed. I don't have, I don't see any future otherwise. So it's safe to say, Lord, destroy me if I'm lying. And if, and that is, if this is not coming from the Father, then I am a liar and I deserve destruction and damnation. I pray for my own damnation. I'm raising the stakes now and declaring a war. On Protestant church and their deception. Because of their doctrine. Not on them. That would be a, no no. It's on the doctrine. Saved by grace alone through faith alone. Grace Jesus never taught. He never uttered the word. How are you saved then? We will come to learn all this guys. All the deceptions will be included. But in a very short succinct manner. Cannot afford to take you to three hour journey. I bet you didn't sign up for a three-hour journey, huh? <laughs> Cruise, if you will. Father God planted two trees in this. There were two trees in this uh, Garden of Eden. God made for his two children, Adam and Eve. He put his first two creation there, his children, Adam and Eve there. And instructed them not, forbade them not to eat from the uh, tree of good and evil, right? The fruit was a forbidden fruit. Eat from the other fruit uh, trees, but do not eat fruit from the tree of good uh, knowledge of good and evil. That is in Genesis 2 and 3, all this account. You can check it out, guys. Now, there was another tree mentioned there, and I will specifically give you the words. This tree is not often mentioned. It has close and in very deep connection with the salvation. It is called the tree of life. And it figures in Genesis 2, 9. Check it out. 2, verse 9. There is a tree of life, and which is... Pretty much close to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now you know the story that Eve and Adam did get deceived they, by Satan. But did any of you ask what was the serpent, what was Satan doing inside God, Garden of Eden? Father God had planted for his two kids, naive kids, inexperienced obviously. They were just formed and put there. Would you do? Think of it, buying a palace and putting a massive deadly cobra to kill your kids there or strike them. Will you do that? Probably not. This cobra is not an ordinary cobra. It is Satan. He cannot kill them, but he can deceive them. God used Satan to test these two or permitted Satan to test them. Whether they wish to obey or not, they stumbled. And we were cursed. Remember guys, when we sin, there is going to be a massive backlash. Do not sin or fight sin. I know it cannot be completely tamed, but Jesus says, Matthew 10, 38, pick up your cross, deny your flesh and follow me daily. He says that in Luke also, daily. What he's saying is, fight your sinfulness daily. Obey me. Follow me. Otherwise you are not even worthy of being my disciple. I don't want you. Now sin is a big deal. These guys disobeyed. They were banished or driven out from where? From the Garden of Eden. What does Father God say? I will read out. It's very interesting. What does he say before he drives them out? So before he drove them out of Garden of Eden, this is what Father God said. And please pay attention. This has a bearing on our salvation or damnation. Remember that, guys. And the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us. Remember, he uses a plural, Father, Son, and the Spirit. Three in one, triune. The man has not become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Before that, they did not. They shouldn't have eaten. They did. Now they knew. After eating the forbidden fruit. 
The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and eat also from the tree of life and live forever. He doesn't want these two to live forever. Now that they know the difference between good and evil, he does not want these two to live forever. So the Lord God banished them, drove, drove them out of the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which they had been taken. Alright guys, the message here is very loud and clear. Now that you know the difference between good and evil, I don't want you there to eat from the other tree and become immortal. Challenge now has sprung forward. Reject sin, evil. And I'll allow you now to eat from the tree of life. That was the message guys. That's why he drove them out. How do we know this? Fast forward to the last. This is the first book. Genesis. What's the last book? Revelation. Is there the tree of life? Yes. It is in heaven. God's paradise. Took it out of Garden of Eden which was like type of paradise. But not the real thing. Precursor. Or a trailer. A teaser. Here is the final. Paradise. God's paradise. And this tree is there. And those who will make it to heaven after a st strong testing, <laughs> wetting if you will. Lot of check, check marks there. Check boxes really. Did you do this, 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 this means? Have you obeyed the Lord God or not? I'll talk about that later. Don't worry guys, it's not difficult. It's not legalistic at all. It's the opposite of legalism. I'll give you a hint. It's all about love. Is love legalism or what? Our churches have swindled us, bamboozled us, they have jibbed us, they have deceived us. Why? Because of Paul. Had they not caught the deception, had they caught the deception of Paul, they wouldn't have ended up teaching us this doctrine of deception, the evil doctrine saved by grace through faith. Jesus did not teach grace. Anyway, there will be a check, a check box list there. It all has to be, whatever Messiah says has to be uh, followed. For example, you couldn't be knowing all this, guys, learn it. Because the Father is giving. Jesus has warned for many, many times, whoever loves their life will lose it. You cannot be saved, guys, if you love your life. Take it down from this Raj Sahu, the condemned man, the cursed man of God who lives here. I don't know for what reason. If you love your life, you're done. I'm not saying it. Messiah says it, Jesus Christ says it repeatedly throughout the four Gospels. We threw it away out of the window. You know why? Because the pastors, teachers, churches love their life with all the money coming in. I don't ask for a single penny. It will lead me to my damnation, con condemnation. I hate my existence because of all the rejections and everything I faced. Ah, praise the Lord, I hate my life. <laughs> I hate my existence and I hate myself. Whoever hates their life will keep it, but whoever loves their life will lose it. One check box number one. Second, whoever loves the world, the love of God is not in them. Check box number two. There are a lot of, I picked a lot from the Bible. Once I was released and relieved of this Pauline deception, I found a great depth and an enormous ask. From the Father and the Son. Whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Okay. Fourth, whoever does not learn to love God, uh, does not learn to love, does not know God, for God is love. This warning is by Apostle John. Where? First John 4. So you got these three, four already. There's one more. Unless you turn and become like these little kids, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Heaven, warning, check box number 5, be like innocent kids, they are harmless, they are loving, they are trusting, they are sinless almost. That kind of humans he wants that in spite of be being who we are, grown up, smart, wild, everything, wise also, we choose to be like those children. When he sees you like that little kid, he wants you guys. Number 5, okay, so there are a bunch of places and then the great warning Matthew 7, 21, this is the very bottom line of the whole scripture. No one comes into, 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord and do not do? The Messiah says, right? I believe it's in 646, Luke. Why don't you do? That's another checkbox. Obey the Lord. Nobody enters the kingdom of heaven unless they do the will of God. Number seven. Checkbox. This is a checkbox list, guys. It's going to happen. You might fight me, brutalize me, reject me, yell at me. I'm used to it, guys. But that will still play out. You know what happened today? I will share this uh, secret with you. However, it is so <laughs> difficult for you to digest that you might think he's making up. I'm not. These things started coming two years back, somewhere around mid-2020, when my wife of 16 years rejected me. I came and started living alone, totally broken. I lost even my puppy and my two daughters. Everything crashed on me. I was living with a hole in the soul in this very apartment. And guess what? There was a supernatural presence. First I thought, it's a double by me. I lost all that and now there is a spirit here. We, we know that Bible says there are a bunch of spirits on earth. Good and bad, both. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Spared me the double, triple, multiple whammy. I mean, it was the spirit of the Lord. He let me go through that horrible uh, moments of rejection, dejection, grief. Pathos was, my life was filled with pathos and melancholy, sadness and grief broken to the to the heart all, all smashed completely that kind of man and he started teaching all this there is a big checklist guys and you know coming back to that vision when I, once I was lying in my bed bed in my bedroom apologize for my accent I it is not a dream it is not a vision and most certainly not like Paul's vision <laughs> I saw either in my dream or a vision or somewhere in between a man standing. Because I had recovered in four or five months my strength because of the word Jesus started feeding me. Praise the Lord. I'm still alive. Two and a half years have gone. Kind of overcome that rejection. It's one of the worst when your whole family walks off on you and you lose your pet dog also. Puppy. <laughs> Before I start crying, I don't want to. I think my tears have dried up. A man was standing there with a checklist. He looked, maybe because I am from India, that guy looked somewhere from South India. He was not very, this is not racial, I am just depicting what I saw. He was not dark and he was not light. He was somewhere in between. Light brownish, wheatish colored man, neither tall nor short. He was looking at me and he had a list on his hand. And he looked tough to me. And he was not intimidating, neither was he friendly. This is very strange. The look in his eyes was neither friendly, he was not loving, neither was he hateful. It was just business-like kind of thing. He says, why are you after our Jesus? What do you want from him? He asked me, why are you, what do you want from Jesus? Because See, being alone gave me the great advantage of just, I loved Jesus, but here I had a great golden opportunity to put all my energy into loving or knowing Jesus, understanding who you are, Lord, without any distraction of the world. I was serving a family, two kids, wife, puppy, what not. My whole world revolved around them and in spare time I would read Bible. Now it was reversed. All came on Bible, the focus, as my intensity increased then this man appeared from nowhere what do you want from our Jesus like this it said you know blank poker faced man standing Indianish looking guy with Indianish features and I believe he was wearing nothing till here and some loin or some cloth all the way from there waist down Looking at, neither was he tall, not too short, but on the shorter side, not very tall at all. These are vivid remembrances. I said, I love him. I do not know any other reason. Why am I after G or Jesus? I love him. Prove that you love him. He started asking. What? Nobody does anything without any reason. He told me. 
what do you want from him i said i love him that is all i want i don't want anything from him he started check marking as i was answering i cannot remember everything he started asking but he wanted answers to many questions and i saw he he was checking boxes guys this is the crux of this vision check boxes boxes will have to be checked it's going to be a very very stringent judgment on the last day remember it's nothing like paul said that uh, believe and go to heaven <laughs> that was nothing but a deception he wanted you to fail on all counts so i saw all that and i he checked the boxes then jesus told me what did i say i am the way the truth and life nobody comes to the father except through me this is a strong warning it's not, these are not words of just comfort you believe jesus and go to heaven that's what the pastors thought here is jesus saying i am the filter i am not going to allow you have to honor all these check boxes he said okay that's enough of this vision because all this is very serious there's a parallel world occurring as i talk to you there is a parallel world which is billion times bigger than this fake world that is going to have the final say that's the god's will uh, the god's world his will be done remember this word guys incorporate it into your daily language your will be done father your will be done fake it till you make it start saying it at least then you'll learn from yourself and then you will mean it one day that his will be done you cannot be saved unless you do the will of god remember that guys nobody enters the kingdom unless we reflect jesus in our lives he does not want us and jesus wants us to be the good samaritans remember that again it will go to 3 hours that's what he said in the good samaritan story in the last day judgment matthew 25 31 46 the goats and the sheep he says the same thing people will be divided on the last day day of judgment based on what they had done similarly like revelation 20 11 15 people where books were opened and people were tested based on what they had done it's all actions he wants to see fruits not barren trees with no fruit and what are those fruit fruit of what loving kindness fruit of what turning away from sin and turning to what compassion kindness keep these words bless all guys this is very serious there will be no more appeals there will be no paul standing no priest or nobody no lawyers nothing it will be you naked because you won't be in your body also i, I you means i i'm as scared as you petrified terrified but lest you get to terrified there is this hope a huge massive real hope jesus jesus says desire is for us to be saved not to be father god says you know i want you to prosper not to destroy you but to prosper you he wants to save us provided we obey all right so now coming back all this is interconnected guys nobody will teach you in your church you will get only filth of paul there nothing else they are so mesmerized they are smitten kittens of paul they be sorted with this bloody what should i say devil son of devil john 832 that they don't know these things so now you coming to know because the father is sharing this cannot be denied there is a checklist there how do you know it is not there all these things jesus was blowing hot air all or what nobody comes to the kingdom of heaven unless you do the will of god and you cannot be saved if you love your own self you cannot be saved if you love the world huh we have to have the love of the father not the world the the world is against the father it is like a devil this world guys it prompts us to sin he hates this bloody world because of the sin of man it is infected infested with sin it is all ready to be destroyed how can you love this damn cancer struck world don't love it love god i know it's going to be hard life but there will be joy you think i have just hard life only or what no within me are joy springs of joy i do not know there is no uh, no justification why am i happy from within most of the time sometimes even there i'm miserable but most time there is this that i start burst out laughing for what all super lord of supernatural is now 
happening as the power comes. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Says Jesus, he's about to be here. And then, praise God, praise God, your will desperately needs to be done, Lord. Never again, never allow anybody to rule. No human, nobody, Lord. You rule from here. I offer you here, my heart, my life. But rule your earth. Don't let humans rule again or anybody else. Demons are ruling. Satan is ruling here. Why do you think he says to hate this world? Satan is the prince of this world. Alright guys, now these two were kicked out. Sorry, driven out. Adam and Eve with a curse, right? Taking the story forward. Father God gave a law. Hmm? Why did he give a law? Why did he give the Ten Commandments, guys? You know why? I'm going to shorten this. It's going to one hour, it seems. Go through it. If you have to have four or five Cokes, even a beer, have it. Or popcorns, have it. Go through it. Understand what is the story. What is the message? It is one word in case you are going to go away from my video. I want you to go away with one word. Love. And even better, loving kindness. Or loving-compassion. We call it Karuna in India. Sounds like Corona, but it's not. Karuna is a Sanskrit word for two words. Loving kindness. I don't expect you to keep it in mind because I was raised on Hindi, a language, which took this from Sanskrit, the mother language. Karuna means loving compassion. If anything will save us is that word, loving compassion, loving dash compassion or loving kindness. That's it. Nothing will because it covers all sin. Proverbs 10, 12. Love covers all sin. First Peter 4, 8. First Peter 4, 8. Love covers a multitude of sin. Now you understand, guys, in this large spectrum of dark to white, light rather, it is love which is the opposite of sin. The more love you will have in your life, works of loving kindness will start erasing left, right and sin your left, right and center your sin. All you will be left is with love in your heart. And you know what happens? You don't have to run for salvation. Salvation will run after you. Keep these words in mind. Love means a big deal for my Lord, your Lord, our Lord, God. He is love. First John 4, 8. He is love. He's, his constitution is love. He's made up out of love. His greatest attribute is love. Check it out in Psalms. It was given for that very purpose. Unfailing love. His love endures forever. His unfailing immortal love. Amar Prem, as we say in India. Immortal love. And that is what he wants us to be. So we reflect Jesus, who is his son. And the father and son are, and son are one. John 10, 30. Son of God is love. What were his top teachings? Hmm? Love God with all your heart, might and soul first. Love your neighbor as yourself. Number two. What was the third? John 15, 12. I give you a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. How hard was it, guys, to understand that the Messiah had come to save only those who turned away from sin and turned to what? Loving kindness. Doesn't John say that whoever does not learn to love does not know God for God is love. He will be looking at you very intently. You will be carrying the strip of all your karma, all your deeds, whatever the heck we have done on earth will be played out in a flash. He will be looking for those places where you practice loving kindness on the one hand and try to at least fight your sin. I am not saying we are 100% perfect. We cannot be. But we have to try Give your best and leave to Christ the rest. He will deliver. Remember, again and again I am repeating, salvation is very difficult to happen. And he says that many are invited, few are chosen. I want you guys to be one of the few, okay? The law of God quickly synopsizing this, which was killed mercilessly by Paul and tagged by our churches who taught the blasphemy, ultimate blasphemy is killing Father God's eternal law. Oh, this Raj Sahu lives for that law. <laughs> what do you understand, guys? The beauty, the magnificence. <laughs> I might be mispronouncing. It is magnificent. It is amazing. It is beautiful. It is life-giving. David calls it pure, eternal, just, perfect, and forever and ever. Psalms 
one 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 seven eight Psalms nineteen seven to eleven Psalms one one nine in fact is totally devoted to the excellence of this law and majesty of it all. The 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 law of God defines law a God Himself. Nobody can touch it. Says the Messiah Matthew five seventeen eighteen. The whole universe has to crash, burn, and disappear before the least bit of God's law can ever go. Warn the Messiah again. Luke sixteen seventeen and Matthew four four. We for you do not live on bread alone, but on every word which comes or proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word, guys. That's the law of God. He's talking about cannot go. The universe has to go. The Messiah won. But what did we do? Do we chopped it? We killed it? We mutilated? We mauled it? We murdered it? We slaughtered it? Do you see the rage and fury of God on us? Do you see where not a tittle, tittle and jot means a comma or a period? Full stop. In very simple words. Nothing can go. Jesus says he's not in a position. People don't understand. Christ cannot touch God's law. Nobody can. Nobody can. We cleaned it up. So again, coming back to Mount Sinai, I'll quickly tell you this is spoken words of God, the man who spoke the entire world into creation, uh, into existence. Man would mean <laughs> this is the guy, Jesus, Father God. He's not a man. He's a spirit, by the way. He create. He spoke it into. Existence, the same man or the same power is now speaking his loud. Do you see the power connection? The one who spoke the universe is speaking out his love, which was killed because of this bastard Paul. I have so much hatred. <laughs> this is the least of the curse words <laughs> for it. Let me read out what the father says on Mount Sinai. I spoke it and then he wrote it. Then he gave it to Moses, who was his FedEx courier. He did nothing. It was attributed to Moses. Moses is Lord. No, 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 no. Don't deceive me. You cannot deceive me. For I am from the great I am. You cannot deceive me. Paul and others and the churches. This was by Father God on Mount Sinai. Let me read out. This is Moses addressing the Israelites in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy means repetition of law. And for a reason this law is being repeated. Because Moses knew the man of God. The humble man of God, obedient to his bone, that everything the father says has to be obeyed. Remember what happened to those who didn't obey the, his law? They were destroyed by the father. What about us? We killed, killed it and we wiped it clean, his law. Those guys disobeyed, we killed his law. You see what's, what's awaiting for us? But don't worry, there is a way out, okay? Jesus is the way. He will, he will yet, he can forgive us, okay? We'll come down to that and that will be the end of the video also. So, Yahweh says, uh, the man of God, Moses, Yahweh spoke these those words, Deuteronomy 5, 19 to 5, 23, I will read. Father God spoke those words to you, your whole congregation at the Mount Sinai, out of the fire and dense clouds, with a mighty voice, keep this, let it resonate in your brains that this is spoken word of God. The law of God was given by his word. The same word which created the universe and this bloody word also. Bloody because we goofed and gave it away to devil. That's why bloody. Otherwise it was pure. With a mighty voice and no more. He inscribed, Father God, now listen. He wrote it down. First he spoke and then he wrote it down to make sure we get it. He inscribed the law on two tablets of stone and gave to Moses, me, he says. 520, when you heard the voice out of the darkness while the mount was ablaze with fire, you came up to me, all your tribal heads and elders and said, Yahweh our God has just shown us his majestic, majest, majestic presence and we have heard his voice out of the fire. We have seen this day that man, in man may live through God. That man may live through God has spoken to him. 522, let us not die then for this fearsome fire will consume us. They were terrified. To see that spectacle, spectacle, <laughs> stun my English. And the, uh, the, the intensity, the volume, the depth of other gods probably was like a roar, like a thunder. You know, 
they got scared i would i would be terrified as it is <laughs> petrified of the father i am be fearful guys for that is the beginning of wisdom let us not die then they pleaded with moses for this fearsome fire will consume because there was a huge fire going on and there was a big cloud and father god's voice booming from there because he was giving his law as he created the world the universe is creating his law forever and ever psalms 7 111 not getting it 7 and 8 psalms 111 7 and 8 psalms 119 151 dash 152 psalms 197211 it is eternal just pure perfect forever and ever that was being created on mount sinai it is forever moses knew if you are going to because he was an old man 127 or 125 at the time he died he wanted the youngsters to know if you have to learn to obey or you are done he was scared for them he loved them he was a good man again all did not paint moses in the right light don't want to go into that okay for what mortal the israelite say for what what mortal ever has heard the voice of the living god speak out of the fire as we did and lived this was written by the hand again rep- repeated in deuteronomy 9 verse 10 it is hand written law of god it is eternal forever and ever unless jesus is lying unless david is lying or paul was lying it was killed by our churches guys so why am i hammering pounding on you right now on this law it has deep deep connection with our salvation it has to be obeyed so how do we go obey one after the other all 10 laws no it's not possible it is not because james says if you stumble on one you are guilty of breaking it all then how do we do it father how do you expect us to keep, keep your entire law through the one you gave on mount sinai on a booming voice written by your fingers and transferred here where jeremiah 31 33 on our hearts on our mind by whom father god see here guys it's here father is obsessed with his law you know what was the purpose of law i'll give you a deep secret today very deep secret because he's giving you where is it go to look stop this and re- flip your bible to luke 10 25 to 28 jesus told us why the law was given is making a direct connection here luke 10 25 to 28 there is this expert of the law who comes and to test jesus he is not a teacher he is an expert a step above teacher he wants to know what is jesus teaching so he comes to jesus and says teacher what must i the expert of the law do in order to be saved good question very relevant even by our standards right now right what does jesus say hey, believe in me man and you are saved no nothing like that you know what he says he asks a question back puts it back on the expert he says you are an expert of the law how do you read the law what does the law tell you now is the answer he says love god with all your heart might and soul and love your neighbor that is your fellow human being as yourself you know what jesus says Two thumbs way up, dude. Well, I made that up. In today's words, he gives him a thumbs up. In fact, a two thumbs up. He says, "Do that, and you will live. You will be saved." You know? Do you know what happened here? The law of God was given for us to turn away from sin on the one hand and turn to love. Now you know. That was the reason the law was given. and it was killed by paul and company and our churches tagged paul rather than the father jesus now see the son the obedient to the bone son matthew 22 37 40 love god with all your heart might and soul and love the fellow human being the neighbor as yourself when you do that what you keep the entire law mount sinai run guys to mount sinai watch watch the father teaching you 
Its obedience is in love. Love God with your heart, might, and soul. No faking, just unfet, <laughs> unfettered love. Just let it lose on the Lord. Love your with him with your because he deserves it, guys. He is love. If you love, it is from God. It says somewhere, you know, we love because you loved us first. Love God. He craves our love. Read the New Testament. The Israelites let him down. No, we have let him down. Nobody loves him. And I know that dirty feeling of rejection. Don't let it happen. Run to him. Love him. He's just full of love. He will put fountain of love inside you. If you make an effort. It's always God and man. Always working in tandem. God walked for, with Adam for a reason. Jesus also taught and took his disciples with him so that they can do what he will, the father will. Why? Why, why, do we, why does the father want us to do his will? So we and God are on one page working in conjunction, in tandem. You know for what this the father is saying. You think this is all his world or what? This bloody, insignificant earth, irrelevant speck in the universe. No, he's going to, this is a university, guys. Who are trusted with little will be trusted with much. You will become his co-heirs and rule the universe with him one day. I'm giving you all the secrets today. As he gave me, I'm giving you. Only those, Josiah, Hezekiah, those, John the Baptist, Stephen, the martyr. You probably, if you've turned away from what? Sin. Turn to what? Loving kindness. Checkbox cleared. And they start getting cleared very fast when you practice loving kindness. Again, Karuna, loving kindness is the catch buzzword. It's the key word. The entire law was given and put here, Jeremiah 31, 33, and here for a reason. We turn away from sin and turn to love. Practicing loving kindness as we traverse through our life. Where it becomes a second nature. And the father sees Jesus in you. What does he say? Come, come. This was always made for you. Says Jesus. Where? Matthew 25, 31, 46. To whom? The sheep. What had they done? They had clothed the poor people. They had fed the hungry they had offered shelter to the destitute, shelter, some refuge to them. They, had, they were altru altruists. They had nothing, no con unconditional love. When father saw them, he said, these are my children, they look like Jesus to me. It's a story of love, guys. Bible story was story of love, which lies untaught. Only Paul is taught, as if the only thing in Bible is somehow to get into heaven. Let that be the last on your agenda. Sorry for this emotional outburst. Father God's story is very emotional. It is full of love. It is full of melancholy, betrayals. Dejections, rejections, what not? Starting from Father God, Israelites rejected Him. The, then we rejected the Messiah, His Son. Hmm? Sorry guys. Maybe I'll have some water here. Huh? I'll have some water and rejoin and finish this. Hey guys, excuse me for that. Huh? So, the whole story of Bible revolved around one word. The operative word is love, loving kindness. That is God. He gave us the Good Samaritan story, which immediately follows the incident. Remember the we just discussed that the expert of the law, because the law, the expert of the law was haughty. He said he wanted to justify himself. He says, "Who's my neighbor, Jesus?" And he said, "Love God and your neighbor." Jesus doesn't answer him yet again. You know what he says? He gives him a parable of a, of the good Samaritan. Hmm? Who are like the sheep. Now you find the connection. Sheep. In the Matthew 25, 31, 46. The goats and the sheep version. 
they are the good he they these guys are the good samaritans like are like the sheep who helps an unknown person while he is dying out of sheer compassion and love and kindness takes him to the inn which is like a hospital in those days and gets him healed that is the heart jesus is giving you a direct hint that is the heart i am going to look at repeats it in parable it's not a parable that just is the vision of final day vision of judgment which is goats and sheep matthew 25 31 46 only the good samaritans will be saved because their love will cover all sins and what remains to be covered is covered by the death of the cross death on the cross of the messiah it is imputed it is applied to those who did fight the sinfulness and turn to loving kindness they were saved and they got to eat the fruit of what the other tree the tree of life it is mentioned in revelation verse 22 to possibly 12 check that out the tree of life is there you will get to drink from the water water of life and eat from that tree you will live forever guys why is it so hard to practice loving kindness i ask you now this is over thankful was very emotional unexpected god is love it, it becomes very emotional sometimes and i am an emotional man nothing to hide turning away from sin turning to loving kindness is the way to go guys because loving kindness is the mount everest of all righteousness love is the deal god is love his universe is love i think it's jeremiah 23 24 where god says my spirit envelops the whole universe and he is love so it's not difficult to understand everything here is in the universe is love which is god get it guys hopefully you got something from the video the two trees and the check boxes you will be vetted i will be vetted it's a difficult judgment a day scenario but if you are love you have nothing to worry you don't have to chase god he chases you did you know that if you become like if you reflect love in your life he will chase you he will run after you i want this guy this gal that is the power of love okay enough of this thank you so much for watching my video sorry for the outburst emotional <laughs> outburst and god bless you with his wisdom that you may see that you are a reflection of god you have the potential to become what love god bless everybody bye